Senator Sanders, do you have an amendment? I do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I think everybody knows, I believe, and the people on our side believe, that the budget being brought forth is one of the most unfair and destructive budgets ever proposed in the modern history of this country. The bottom line is, it provides incredible tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country, while it makes trillions of dollars in cuts to the needs of working people in terms of health care, Medicaid, Medicare, in terms of education, in terms of environmental protection, and in terms of programs that many, many millions of people desperately depend upon. This is a budget based on the Robin Hood principle in reverse. It takes from working people and those in need to give to millionaires and billionaires. And during the course of this debate, uh, our side has some excellent amendments that I think would, would address the very serious uh, problems of the Republican budget. And I'd like to call up uh, the very first amendment, that is Sanders Amendment Number 1. Mr. Chairman, this amendment is simple and straightforward. It would simply establish a 60-vote budget point of order to prevent the top 1% of Americans, people who are doing phenomenally well today, from receiving any future tax cuts. This amendment says that at a time of massive wealth and income inequality, the last thing we should be doing right now is providing hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to billionaires who certainly don't need it. Mr. Chairman, today the United States has more income and wealth inequality than any time since the late 1920s. Incredibly, the top one-tenth of one percent now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. One-tenth of one percent owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Twenty individuals in America own as much wealth as the bottom half of our people. According to a recent study by the Federal Reserve, the top 1% now own 39% of the nation's wealth, while the bottom 60% own just 3%. And since the Wall Street crash a decade ago, 52% of all new income has gone to the top 1%. Mr. President, this amendment is pretty simple. It says that at a time when the very, very rich are getting richer, while so many people are struggling, at a time when we have a $20 trillion national debt, the last thing in the world we should be doing is giving trillions of dollars in tax breaks to the 1%. So, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, I hope very much uh, that uh, we can pass this amendment. The Walton family, wealthiest family in America, the Koch brothers, second wealthiest family in America, the Trump family, multi-billionaire family, do not need tax breaks. We need to help the working families and the middle class of this country, not the people on top. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll proceed to the next amendment, which would be Senator's Amendment Number Two. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I call up Sanders Amendment Number Two. Um, this amendment is simple, straightforward. It simply creates a budget point of order. Yes. Medicaid or Social Security, as I think we all know, the Republican budget uh, provides 80 percent, according to various studies, about 80 percent of the uh, tax breaks will go to the top 1%. That's $1.9 trillion in tax breaks over a 10-year period going to the top 1%. But this Republican budget also makes massive cuts to Medicaid, a trillion dollars, throwing some 15 million people off of the health insurance they have, and massive cuts to Medicare, uh, over $473 billion. Uh, Mr. President, interestingly, uh, Interestingly enough, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think everybody here remembers that when Donald Trump ran for president, one of the tenets of his campaign was that he was a different type of Republican and he was not going to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. On April 18, 2015, Trump said, and I quote, every Republican wants to do a big number on Social Security, they want to do it on Medicare, they want to do it on Medicaid, and we can't do that. And it's not fair to the people that have been paying in for years, and now all of a the sudden they want to be caught. End of quote. So you have a man running for president telling the American people he was not going to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. We have a budget now which provides a trillion dollar cut in Medicaid and $473 billion cut in Medicare. Mr. Chairman, the American people in poll after poll are very clear that they do not want to see these important health care programs cut. 86% of Republicans want to either maintain or increase funding for Social Security, but 95% of Democrats also want to preserve or grow that program. 60% of Americans oppose slashing Medicaid, according to a Quinnipiac poll of last week. The American people are pretty united. They do not want to see Social Security cut. They do not want to see Medicare cut. They do not want to see Medicaid cut. 
And that is one of the reasons why Trump got as many votes as he did. So I would hope that my Republican, co Republican colleagues will respect the wishes of their president and make it clear that uh, we will not support cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and uh, <coughs> opposition to the side. Yeah, let me just say a few words. Our friends here said we don't want to hurt Medicaid. It's not really a cut because actual dollars, nominal dollars are going up. You cut cuts Medicaid by a trillion dollars. Fifteen million people lose the health insurance they have. Senator Johnson and others, you go tell those fifteen million people. Many of them may have cancer or heart disease, life-threatening illness. It's not a cut. We're just sorry you lost the health insurance you had. And interestingly enough, in the House. House Republicans came up with a number pretty much similar in terms of cuts to Medicare, what this budget does. Theirs is $490 billion, the one here is $473 billion. But they were a little bit more specific. You know what they said? Let's raise the eligibility age for Medicare to 67 years of age. So tell that worker who's now 65, 66, who was hoping to get Medicare, they're not going to get it. Tell them that that's not really a cut. Those are just funny numbers. They want to voucherize Medicare over in the House. So tell that older American who gets a check for $8,000 struggling with a life-threatening disease and goes to an insurance company and gets laughed out of the room because nobody will provide health insurance to an older person dealing with cancer for $8,000. These are cuts that will kill people. These are cuts that will hurt people. And these are cuts that should not, in a humane society, be allowed to take place. Let's support Senator Harris's amendment. Senator Sanders. Let's be clear what Senator Harris's amendment is about is it would require 60 votes to raise taxes on the middle class. So we have a Republican budget that says it's okay to give 80% of the tax breaks, almost $2 trillion, to the top 1%, and yet 30% of people earning between fifty dollars and $150,000 would have to pay more in taxes. That is absurd. You don't give huge tax breaks to billionaires and then force middle-income Americans to pay more in taxes. So I strongly support Senator Harris's uh, evidence. Mr. Chairman, I, I eagerly await the Republican responses to why the American people should not know the implications and the consequences of their legislation, and why for the first time CBO should not be allowed to issue a report analyzing what is in the bill. Thank you, and I'm eager to respond to that. Time has expired. Yay. Uh, I, I'll try. All time has expired. Oh, by my clock, Senator White has seven and a half seconds left, but is that wrong? I think you just used it. All right. <laughs> Bring it up later. That will be set aside. The next amendment is Sanders number 34. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this amendment establishes a deficit neutral reserve fund to allow for a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United and to reform our broken campaign finance system by moving towards the public funding of elections. Mr. Chairman, in my view, the Republican budget we're discussing today is patently absurd. It gives massive, massive tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country. It makes horrific cuts to Medicare and Medicaid. It forces about 30% of middle class families to pay more in taxes. And it also uh, allows for massive cuts to education, nutrition, nutrition, and environmental protection. Now, why would anybody want to push a proposal, a budget like this. Well, I think it has a lot to do with an article that appeared uh, on June 26th in the Guardian newspaper. Let me quote the article. Quote, at a weekend donor retreat attended by at least 18 elected officials, the Koch brothers warned that time is running out to push their agenda, most notably health care and tax reform through Congress. One Texas-based donor warned Republican lawmakers that his Dallas piggyback was now closed until he saw legislative progress. Quote, get Obamacare repealed and replaced, get tax reform passed, said Doug Deason, get it done and we'll open it back up. Nonetheless, Koch officials said that the network's midterm budget for policy and politics is between $300 million and $400 million. A few minutes ago, we talked about the estate tax and, in my view, the absurdity of giving tax breaks of tens and tens of billions of dollars to the Walton family, the Koch brothers' family, Sheldon Adelson's family, Donald Trump's family. Well, it might be interesting to note that five of the richest families in this country stand to save almost $135 billion if the estate tax were repealed. And guess what? Surprise, surprise. These very same families that poured huge amounts of money 
into campaign contributions and other mechanisms to see that the estate tax is repealed, including $3.4 million, the, the Wal I'm sorry, since 1998, the Walton, Koch, and DeVos families have given at least $50 million to groups that fight for the reversal of the estate tax and for other tax breaks that go to the rich. We need fundamental reform of a corrupt campaign finance system. Billionaires should not be allowed to buy the process, the political process, in the United States. And I would ask support for this amendment to move us forward. First Amendment is Sanders number one. Sir, one minute debate time remaining. 30 seconds on each side. There's reasons for it earlier. Well, Senator Sanders. Um, we live in a nation today which has a massive level of income and wealth inequality. There is no debate but that the very wealthiest people in this country are becoming phenomenally richer. The middle class is shrinking. We have 40 million people living in poverty. Our job is to rebuild the middle class and the working class of this country, not to give billions and hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the top 1%. And that's what this amendment is about. No tax breaks for the top 1%. This, this amendment gives uh, requirements outside of the Budget Committee. Um, so, uh, after consultation of the parliamentarian, the chair finds the amendment is non germane and out of order. So, I rule the amendment out of order. Mr. Chairman, I appeal the ruling of the chair. I move to table the appeal. The motion is non debatable. The question is on the motion to table the appeal on the ruling of the chair. All those in favor of tabling the appeal? Aye. Say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. 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 Uh, I think we should do a quick roll call. Yeah. With the clerk poll the committee. Mr. Grassley. Uh, it's a motion to table. Motion to table. Yes, Mr. Crapo. Aye. Tabling the appeal. Mr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Toomey. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Corker. Aye. Mr. Perdue. Aye. Mr. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Kennedy? Aye. Mr. Guzman? Aye. Mr. Strange? Aye. Mr. Sanders? No. Mrs. Murray? No. Mr. Wyden? No. Ms. Stabenow? No. Mr. Whitehouse? No. Mr. Warner? No. Mr. Merkley? Mr. Kane? No. Mr. Kane? No. <coughs> Mr. Van Hollen? No. Ms. Harris? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Aye. Mr. Chairman, there are 12 ayes and 10 nays. The appeal is tabled. Senator Sanders, 30 seconds. This amendment says that we should not allow this budget to make $473 billion cuts to Medicare and a trillion dollar cuts to Medicaid, which would throw 15 million Americans off <coughs> of their health insurance. Please vote yes. After consultation with the parliamentarian, the chair finds the amendment is not germane and out of order, so I'll rule the amendment out of order. I appeal the rule of the chair. I move to table the appeal. The motion is non-debatable. Um, thank you. And ask for roll call. Okay, the, the clerk will poll the committee. Mr. Grassley? Aye. Mr. Crapo? Aye. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Timmy? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Corker? Mr. Perdue? Aye. Mr. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Kennedy? Aye. Mr. Bozeman? Aye. Mr. Strange? Aye. Mr. Sanders? No. Ms. Murray? Aye. Mr. White? No. Ms. Stabenow? Mr. Whitehouse? No. Mr. Warner? No. Mr. Merkley? No. Mr. Kane? No. Mr. King? Shawnee. 
Mr. Van Hollen? Ms. Harris? Mr. Chairman? Aye. Ms. Stabenow? No. Mr. Chairman, there are 12 yeas and 11 nays. Okay, the uh, motion to table has passed. One minute each. Just one minute each. Yep. That's the Senator, I'll yield to you. Um, go ahead. Okay. You know, it was a beautiful room. We've had a pleasant discussion. We've debated amendments. But the outside world is not this room. And the truth is that in the outside world, what this will be perceived as is one of the most cruel and destructive budgets in the modern history of this country. This budget gives $1.9 trillion in tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country, billionaires and millionaires. It will throw 15 million Americans off of the health care they have with a trillion dollar cut in Medicaid, massive cuts in Medicare, massive cuts in education, in child care, everything that the working people of this country needs. Anyone with a human conscience should vote against this terribly destructive budget. 